You're about to discover eight really big watchouts if you're dreaming of considering or planning going on an Antarctica cruise. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travelers. I'm going to give you eight big watchouts that I really wish I'd known a lot about before I went on this amazing experience. The first thing you need to know is that going to Antarctica is going to cost you a lot of money. Expect to spend $10,000 and upwards to go to Antarctica and you could be spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars if you really want to go in luxury and at peak times. And there's a number of key costs to that. The first is the cruise itself and even the cheapest that you're likely to find is around about six thousand five hundred US dollars. Secondly, you're going to have to get to Ushaya in the southern tip of Argentina. 90% of people who go to Antarctica will leave from Ushaya, so most of the cruisers will depart from here. Now, normally people come either, they go to Buenos Aires, then come down to Ushaya, or what a lot of the cruise companies will do is they you fly to Santiago and they have a charter flight from Santiago, Chile to Ushaya, because that's one of the closest hub airports that there are. Thirdly, you're going to have to buy or rent very specific equipment. So you're going to need various layers, boots, you're going to need gloves, hats, a whole bunch of equipment that you're going to need to go to Antarctica. Now there could be some other costs. So for example, on Silver Sea they include kayaking as part of your fare. However, most other expedition cruise lines, if you want to do things like kayaking, there's an additional charge. And of course then you have other expenses on board like the laundry, Wi-Fi, but assume as a starting point that it's going to cost you at least ten thousand US dollars to go to the Antarctic per person. The second key thing is there is a very limited amount of time of the year that you can actually visit Antarctica. So the core season really is December, January and February. Now some cruises will start going towards the end of October and start up during November, but there is a lot of ice still then. The season really ends for most companies at the first week of March. Some will go a little bit later. December, January is the peak time. It's when it's the warmest, so between five to minus five degrees Celsius, long days, 20 hours of daylight. This is when prices are the highest and you need to book way in advance if you want to go at this time. The third thing you need to understand is when people talk about cruising to Antarctica, there's a very specific part that you go to. Now there's a number of different itineraries. The classic Antarctica cruise goes from a shire across a strake passage, spend some time in the South Shetland Islands, then moves across to the peninsula. That's where most of those cruises go to. So you'll have two days crossing Drake's Passage, five or so days on the South Shetland Islands and the Antarctic Peninsula, and then two days back. So it's normally around about a 10 day trip. The second most popular trip is the one which includes South Georgia and the Falklands. These tend to be up to two weeks or longer and it's a much broader and more diverse itinerary. But of course it's longer and it will cost you much more money. My next big watch out is be extremely cautious and careful about what size ship and what cruise line you go with. Now there's basically three key ways that you can see Antarctica. One is on research ships which are very small and pretty rough and ready kind of experience. You then have your expedition ships and these tend to be quite a wide range of ships but they will be quite small around 200 passengers or less. Then the third way of doing it is on much bigger ships which could have 500 or more passengers and they tend to be the much more classic cruise ships and they will tend to be more classic cruise ships. So the expedition ships and the research ships will be ice class ships designed to deal with the sea ice. Now very importantly in my view you have not visited Antarctica unless you go on an expedition ship or a research ship. If you go on a bigger ship you will not do any landings. The regulations in Antarctica say that only ships of around 200 guests can actually do landings and only 100 people can be on a landing site at any one time. So the big ships will come down to Antarctica and they will do some scenic cruising. But if you really want to come to Antarctica you need to go on a smaller ship. They will also have the capacity to go much deeper down into the peninsula where there are more icebergs, ice and sea ice. And you can very importantly do the landings. Don't just come to Antarctica in my view on a big ship so you can tick the box saying you've seen it because seeing Antarctica and stepping on land and going and moving amongst the wildlife is very different to just sailing by and having a look at the incredible scenery. Also very importantly not only because of the cost but also because some of the restrictions is it's really is an adult activity. 
most companies will not let kids under the age of eight or six onto the Zodiacs, which means that they will then spend the whole time on the ship with no kids facilities. It is very much an adult experience. So if you do have kids that you want to take to Antarctica, you, I recommend you really wait until they're in their teens or even older before you actually go with them to Antarctica. Probably the biggest watch out about going to Antarctica is the getting there and the getting back. You have to spend up to two days on Drake Passage, crossing from a shire to the South Shetland Islands to start exploring. Drake's Passage has some of the roughest, if not the roughest, seas in the world. It doesn't matter what time of the year you go, there's not a time of the year where it's better or worse. And it can be very, very rough. So what you need to do is assume that for two days there's a strong chance that you're going to have rough seas. Now you could be lucky and have what's known as Drake Lake, but most of the times you're likely to have Drake Shake. We were very lucky on our crossing both there and coming back. We had pretty good crossing. We had swells of four to five meters, but it can be much higher than that. They do build in at least two full days. Now, if you have good weather, you'll actually find your time in Antarctica can be slightly longer because they can get there a little bit quicker. But getting there, assume that the sea is going to be rough. Make sure that you've taken all the precautions. Make sure that you're well prepared. The key watch out is you need to have very specific gear. First of all, you're going to need layers. Layering is absolutely key to dealing with the cold in Antarctica, also because you can layer up and layer down if things get warmer, like you're hiking up a big mountain. First of all, you have a base layer, which is sort of like long johns and equivalent top. You then have a sort of insulation layer, which could be as simple as a pair of jeans, some sort of sweatshirt. Then on top of that, you then need a waterproof layer. So you need waterproof trousers and you need a waterproof parker jacket. Now, many of the cruise companies will actually provide a parker because they want it to be a bright red color. So when you go on landings, they're able to spot you very easily on land. You're also going to need very thick socks. You're going to need very specific boots and they need to be high boots which come up to almost your knee level because a lot of the landings that you do will be into water. You're also going to need what I recommend, some inner gloves, some thin inner gloves, and then a couple of sets of waterproof big chunky gloves. Also some sort of neck gaiter, not a scarf, it's better to have a neck gaiter because also you can pull it up. You need a good hat which covers your ears. Your ears get really cold. Good pair of sunglasses. It's very bright. Bear in mind you do need to bring this gear yourself because the ship will not have it for you. You won't be able to get it on board. Another really important watch out is nothing is guaranteed and you need to be very flexible and open. Antarctica weather and conditions change very rapidly. The ice moves very rapidly and weather does chop and change like crazy. So nothing is guaranteed. There is a rough plan of what you're going to do. There's a goal of places you're going to go and see, but it could constantly change. So bear in mind, there is always a risk that you're going to spend a lot of money. You're going to head down to Antarctica and it just isn't going to work out. And you just cannot get upset because they will do whatever they can to get you to places. But obviously it's a wild part of the world, but be prepared to be flexible and be prepared that things may just not go at all to plan. Antarctica is one of the most incredible places in the world. I would strongly recommend that you put it on your list and start saving to go. I'd love it if you watched many more of my Tips for Travelers videos. They're designed to help you make the most of your very precious travel time and money, whether it's on land, it's on sea, or it's on the rivers of the world.